From the nation's capital here in Washington, D.C., this is Big East Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network presented by SoFi. Today, the Georgetown Hoyas play host to the Villanova Wildcats. And welcome everybody courtside here at McDonough Arena alongside Monica Moore. I'm Ben Gordon Goldstein. And a couple of teams coming off a nice Friday off here in Big East play, so a full week off for these teams. Villanova coming off a loss on Sunday in their last game, but on the other side, Georgetown, big win, snaps the losing streak in Big East play. They had two goals against Xavier. They wanted to score over 60. They wanted to hold the Musketeers to 50 or under. They achieved both. So Georgetown with the victory moves to 2-11 and in conference play. Villanova, you see, got the loss on Sunday 7-6, and but still that big cluster in the middle of Big East play. Meanwhile, for Georgetown, every single game right now is important and was he come down the stretch in Big East play. So we look at a couple of our players to watch here in this game. First, we start with Villanova and Maddie Seacrest, the redshirt freshman, has been unbelievable this season. She was just named Big East Rookie of the Week for the 10th straight time. Only two other players have ever done that, UConn's Maya Moore, Georgetown's Natalie Butler. That is some phenomenal company to be keeping. Pretty impressive for Seacrest. And on the other side for Georgetown, Nikola Kovacikova has been unbelievable here recently, coming off her second double-double of the season. Last time these two teams played, she had 13 points in that contest. Georgetown really needs for Kovacikova to help Taylor Barnes on the scoring end to take some of that pressure off Barnes. Georgetown Villanova coming up next. We'll hear from Kelsey Nicole Nelson on the sidelines. <laughs> waves throughout the college basketball world when he announced that this year would be his last year and announcing his retirement. And though he'll continue with Villanova in an administrative role next season, Villanova's program will sincerely miss him. So much social media and so many tributes paying tribute to the great late to the great coach. That being said, right now, Villanova has two current players that are daughters of two former players that Harry coach. And also, when you look at all that he's done with the program, the Big East tournament titles, the Big East uh, packages. Also, we just see Harry has done so much for the Lenovo program. That being said, we are now going to go to the starting lineups with Monica Moore and Ben. All right. Thanks, Kelsey. 778 career wins for Harry Perretta. Pretty impressive run for him as we take a look at the starting lineups for Villanova and same starting five that they've gone with now for all 14 Big East games. Ankin, Raven James, Mary Gadeka, Bridget Herlihy, Maddie Seacrest, who we just highlighted a moment ago, has had a tremendous season. And on the Georgetown side, you see Georgetown wearing the pink uniforms. Play for K Foundation being supported here today at Georgetown and the same starting five that they've gone with over the last couple of games as well. Brianna Jones gets the start along with Marvelous Osagi Arese, Kalova, Kovacikova, and Taylor Barnes. As you look at head coach James Howard, Third season for the Hoyas, 40 and 50 record overall as Georgetown and Villanova get ready to tip it off here at McDonough Arena. Kalova Hurlihy tip it up. Villanova wins the tip and we are underway here between the Wildcats and the Hoyas here on a Sunday afternoon at Georgetown. And of course, the problem with Villanova, they have so many offensive weapons on this team. Great look inside. There's a kick out there, three-pointer no good. Brianna Jones will get the rebound. We talked about Segrist in the open, but the senior Gadeka also a very impressive career for her in four seasons at Villanova. Raven James certainly can hit a lot of shots, as can Bridget Herlihy. And for the Hoyas, the question mark is who is going to get the offense started today? Kovacikova with an air ball there, and it's rebounded by Ankin. And 
Villanova will push back the other way. Quick three-pointer here. That one rims out, and Brianna Jones with her second rebound of the game here for Georgetown. And what Georgetown is doing so well early on in this contest is not allowing the second-chance opportunities. That's something that James Howard has talked a lot about this year, and against a team like Villanova, you have to be very strong on the boards. Here's Brianna Jones, a little jumper from the side of the free throw line, no good, bounces around. And an offensive rebound there for Osagi Aresi. And a second opportunity here for Georgetown. And that's one of the things she adds to this team. She's very scrappy. She's very experienced in terms of her years with the Georgetown program and understanding the system. Travel there for Taylor Barnes. As Barnes played really well over the last couple of games. And Terry Peretta talked about him in the open, but 778 career wins in 42 seasons and pretty impressive continuity on both sides of the Villanova basketball program. Peretta has only worked with three men's coaches in his 42 seasons as well. So pretty impressive there and they'll have a nationwide search after the season for their new head coaches. Gadeka there with the bucket and the first basket of the game. That was a really strong post move by Mary Gadeka. She has really progressed when you think about from her freshman season to now as a senior with Villanova. It is so exciting to see that growth and development. Here's Kovacikova driving to the basket, no good. And Villanova grabs the defensive rebound, a little backcourt pressure there for Georgetown. Villanova coming off that loss last Sunday to Butler. A lot of turnovers in that game, did not handle the pressure well down the stretch. And so we'll see how they bounce back here against Georgetown. Once again, you see Villanova doing a good job posting up, but what about this steal by Brianna Jones? Great anticipation by the graduate student. And a good job by Villanova to get back quickly, but an early turnover. Jones, the three-pointer, that's no good. And Georgetown has started this game 0 for 4 so far. Both teams really working up and down the court, but as you said it, shooting woes for both of the two teams. They're actually getting some good shots, just not able to knock them down. I talked with James Howard about that before this contest, and he told me that was the difference in Xavier. They always get the types of shots they got at Xavier, but the difference was they were finally able to hit them. Shot clock winding down here. Three is Gadeka will take the three, and it's rebounded by Osagi Aresi. And so both teams off to the slow shooting start in this one as Osagi Aresi going to the basket. Misses the layup, though, and it's rebounded, and James will push back for Villanova. Georgetown has now missed two layups in this contest. Those are shots that the Hoyas have to make, especially against a team like Villanova. And an entry pass there by Hurley. He goes off the hands of the freshman Segrist, then another turnover here for Villanova. I think right now both coaches probably not happy with what they're seeing out on the floor as we talked about with Georgetown. They really have to be able to knock down these open shots. And for Villanova, looking a little unsettled on the offensive end, a bit uncharacteristic for the Wildcats. There's Kovacikova. Mentioned it before, Phil, or Georgetown rather, coming off the win against Xavier. That was their first win in the calendar year of 2020 as Kovacikova hits the three pointer and she's added a much needed spark from outside for Georgetown over the last few games. And you really love her confidence. She missed her first two shots, including that layup, but was able to knock down the three for the Hoyas. And they are going to need her today, as we talked about. She really gave them the spark last time these two teams played. And another dangerous pass and turnover. So we take another look at the three-pointer by Kovacikova here as James Howard looking over at his team. And the three-pointer here is a good drive inside by Barnes. Kick out in the open three there. Confidence is something that James Howard has been talking about a lot with his team. And Kovacikova has the second one rim out there. And Villanova will have it. Three to two, Georgetown leading. Had not much scoring, almost five minutes into this ball game. A very different start here for Villanova. Segrist getting position inside there and a huge size advantage over the five foot four Osagi Aresi. As you take a draws look here, the foul. great entry pass as she draws the foul. And Segrist will head to the free throw line. But last time Villanova played Georgetown, they shot 64.3% in the first quarter. That was a big difference in that game. They got off to that quick start. They led 23 to 14 after the first. But today they have been very cold, and they've had some costly turnovers on the offensive end. 
A little odd on the free throw. Coach Harry Peretta called all four other players on the floor over to him instead of putting them underneath the bucket. And Segrist knocked down the two free throws, but Harry Peretta, a few words for the other four starters of his Villanova team. Four to three, Villanova leads it, approaching the five minute mark in this game as Brianna Jones driving to the basket and another layup rims out there for Georgetown. They've had a number of looks from in tight and just have not been able to finish. And I really like Georgetown putting the ball on the floor, driving, trying to draw the defense, but as we talked about, you have to make those shots. James no good on the three pointer, but it's knocked out of bounds off of Georgetown, so Villanova will keep it with a fresh 20. Our apologies to our camera guy there, who's working very hard on the sidelines. Still got the shot. <laughs> so that one deflected out of bounds once again off of Georgetown. So Villanova 19 on the shot clock. Get it into Segrist. Villanova getting some good movement on this offensive possession. Shot there, no good, and another offensive rebound. Gadeka that time, and so a second, third opportunity, and now it'll be a fourth opportunity as that one goes off the hands of Georgetown, out of bounds, and so Villanova will keep it after the timeout. Slow offensive start, four to three, Villanova leading Georgetown. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. All right, we got to be all in, all in, all right? And we got to make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. All right, we've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Welcome back to McDonough Arena. 4-3, Villanova leads this one. 4.47 to go in the first quarter. And play for K Day here at Georgetown. Both teams wearing pink. You see the pink shoes there of Georgetown. That's one thing you can always count on from the Hoyas is great looking shoes. And both teams wearing the pink shoes. The Play for K Foundation named after Coach K Yao fights against the cancer affecting all women. And so it's been a great day across here in the Big East. The number of teams across the Big East wearing pink today as well. And some good looking uniforms for Georgetown as they trail in this one. Four to three and Villanova on this possession has got now four extra opportunities here off offensive rebounds. And of course the problem for both of these two teams, Villanova shooting 14.3% in the first Georgetown, shooting 12.5, it has been abysmal on the offensive end for both of these two squads. And really the only silver lining is neither team 
able to convert on offense. And another turnover there by Villanova, their fourth of the game. So that was something that plagued them in their last game against Butler when they turned the ball over 25 times in that last game, a game that they led in the fourth quarter but couldn't finish down the stretch. And now a number of early turnovers in this one for the Wildcats as well. Meanwhile, for the Hoyas, the Achilles Hill not getting a good start in games and not coming out of the locker room at the half. And there's Taylor Barnes getting her first points of the game, driving to the basket, and Georgetown finally able to finish from in close. And that's a great sign for Georgetown because, again, just to finish the thought, they've had trouble in the first, they've had trouble in the third, and another nice offensive rebound. It's four offensive rebounds so far in this game for Villanova. Gadeka trying to battle to the basket, and a block there by Caleb, uh, who has been tough defensively here for Georgetown. That is one of the biggest strengths she adds to this Boyas team. Now, if you talk to James Howard, he'll tell you he knows he can always count on Caleb uh, for the defensive intensity. They're looking for her to continue to contribute more and more offensively. Here's Kovacikova going to the basket. Another miss layup. She gets her own offensive rebound, though. It's Caleb uh, from in the paint, knocks it down, and the Hoyas have their largest lead at three. And a nice job by Caleb, uh, the soft touch on the jumper. Averages about six points per game for the Hoyas. What a great movement. From in tight there for Villanova, and it was Herlihy who was able to finish there for Villanova. And Herlihy's the one who's really stepped up as that third scorer for Villanova behind Seacrest and Gadeka. And it's a 7 to 6 Georgetown lead. It's a nice little spin there, but another missed layup here for Georgetown, and Villanova clears away the defensive rebound. That was a great defensive rebound by Segrist. And going back to Hurley, she moved so well without the basketball on that play. A little toss inside, big size advantage, and Segrist can't finish, and it's knocked out of bounds off of Segrist. And we have seen a number of misses from both sides, and here's the drive to the basket, one that was finished there by Georgetown. Taylor Barnes has played really well over the last three games, shooting right at 50%, 19 points a game over the last three contests for Taylor Barnes, so she's been a big key. Well, she certainly has, and again, the thing for Georgetown, they have to find balance for Barnes on offense because opposing teams focus in so much on her, it takes the pressure off when Kovacikova and Brianna Jones are able to find their offense as well. And Kovacikova with another miss there. Gadeka trying to go inside, and a foul is drawn. And Villanova will shoot a couple there. And Kelsey Nicole Nelson is on the sidelines. In the huddle, in the huddle we heard Georgetown head coach James Howard look to empower his team. He said, you guys have a strong start on defense. We're going to end the huddle saying defense. But you guys have got to listen to each other. He said, we have to cut, stop, keep getting stops. You have to make sure you're popping out on plays. In transition, we're winning this. Keep up. Keep at it. He looked each one in the eye and said, let's get back to the blaze basics. Let's play our game. Remember, this is Georgetown. Remember, this is Georgetown. Thanks, Kelsey, is Gadeka knocks down a couple from the free throw line. So four free throws made so far for Villanova in this game, and they have the 8-7 to seven lead. And just like Kelsey was saying, Georgetown has done well on the defensive end. Now, certainly it's helped Georgetown that Villanova is struggling a little bit with their shots. But for Georgetown, it's deflating when you get down on your end of the floor and you're not hitting shots you should be converting on. As Cassandra Gordon checked into the game there for Georgetown, missed that last shot. And five starters for Villanova play a lot of minutes and good for them that they had Friday off, so feeling fresh as Taylor Barnes' little reach and foul there on James. And that'll be the third foul of the quarter there against Georgetown. And you see here the reach by Barnes and when then you and I saw her play against St. John's, and she got in the foul trouble and a couple of ill-advised fouls in that contest. She's going to have to play very smart that because a, she's a player they have to have on the floor. That was a big key in that fourth quarter against St. John's. Taylor Barnes was playing really well and got into foul trouble, and now that one's going to be called offense at that time. So a break there for Barnes. Looked like she got called for two on the possession, but it's actually an offensive foul called against Gadeka. And we take another look at it there. 
And it looked like Adeka just kind of cleared her out with the right arm. You really have to credit what Villanova did on that play, though. Even though they got called for the foul, they have such great awareness when they have the mismatches inside. Barnes versus Gadeka, and they get the ball to Gadeka. And Kovacikova, nice little pass there inside to Kalova, and two misses from in tight. And that has been the story so far for Georgetown in this game. Good looks inside, just not able to finish. And they're now 3 of 17 from the floor, and a great cut to the basket by Gardler. Well, I've talked about moving without the basketball, and that is exactly what McGinsey Gardler just did on that possession. And again, credit Villanova. They're finding the right person for the shot. Now 40 seconds left in the first quarter and a loose ball here. It's Gordon who goes down to the floor trying to save it and a tie up there. Possession arrow does favor Georgetown, though, so they'll keep it with 13 left on the shot clock. What a spark. Mackenzie Gardler, though, is providing off the bench. Look at this hustle by number four for Villanova, and then she's going to go and help tie up the ball. So after providing that basket, she gets down on the defensive end and makes a good play as well for the Wildcats. Gardler had not scored in the last two games for Villanova, a player that averages just over 10 minutes a game off the bench, but really playing well in the closing minutes here as Barnes will take a three-pointer. That's no good and a defensive rebound there for Villanova, and they can hold for one if they want to here to finish off the first quarter. And again, what Villanova has been doing so well in this game is they've been finding the right player, the player that has the mismatch, the player that's moving well without the basketball. They just need to knock down shots just like the Hoyas, but their offense is running fairly well. And a carry here on Gardler with five seconds remaining in the quarter. So trying to go to the basket gets called for the carry and the sixth turnover of the quarter. And so Barnes will try to push it up. Two, one, heaves up the shot and misses on the runner. And that is how things will come to an end here in the first quarter of play. So Villanova ends the quarter on a 6-0 run. They'll lead it 10-7. So we head to the second. You're watching Georgetown Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. At St. John's University, our students believe, serve, explore, and achieve. A Catholic, Vincentian, metropolitan, and global university, we're at the heart of where lives are enriched. We provide a transformative education that goes far beyond the classroom. We aspire to do more. And for nearly 150 years, the St. John story has been the story of New York City. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. And welcome back to Georgetown. Ben Gordon Goldstein, Monica Moore back with you. 10 to 7, Villanova leading Georgetown here at the start of the second quarter. And tickets for the Big East Women's Basketball Tournament are on sale now. Presented by Jeep, it returns to Wintrust Arena in downtown Chicago, March 6th to the 9th. So just a couple weeks away, all session tickets for the 2020 Conference Tournament are now on sale starting at $50 for tickets. Visit www.bigeast.com backslash WBB tickets. That's bigeast.com backslash WBB tickets. And Monica, we look at that first quarter of play and not exactly pretty for either team. Georgetown 3 of 18 from the field, Villanova 3 of 13 from the field. So Villanova shooting 23%. That really contrasts with the last time these two teams played when they shot over 60% in the first quarter. But another problem 
for the Wildcats in that first quarter. Six turnovers. I know Coach Peretta not happy with that statistic, and that's likely one thing they talked about at the break. Villanova's going to start the quarter with three players off the bench. Gardler and Mullen actually just two players off the bench joining three of the starters and a missed three-pointer. Their offensive rebound, two chances for Segrist. Can't finish, and it's going to be tipped out of bounds off of Segrist. And so the second quarter starts much the way the first quarter ended. Missed shots from in close. And a little frustrating there for Segrist. She times her jump so well when she rebounds, but could not convert on either of those buckets. Meanwhile, Tatiana Thompson coming in for Georgetown. She can provide some outside shooting, and she can be a little bit of a mismatch for certain players because she can play inside and out. Cassandra Gordon also off the bench. She finished the first quarter for Georgetown, so each player, team with a couple of players off the bench right now. And Georgetown trying to figure out how to knock down some shots here at the start of the second quarter. And Kovacikova once again going to the basket. They've been able to get there and finally able to finish from inside. And I like how aggressive Kovacikova is being off the dribble, driving inside, that time able to convert. A good sign for Georgetown to start out this second quarter. Gardler with Mullen outside. Gardler provided a nice spark for Villanova at the end of the first quarter. Now three-pointer there. That one's missed. And slow go for Segris so far in this game. 0 of 6 now from the field for the freshman superstar. And when you think about the fact she averages over 20 points per game, that is a lot of offensive production that has been missing so far for Villanova. Kovacikova once again able to get inside. Seems like she's been able to get inside whenever she wanted to. And that one goes off the foot of a Villanova player. And a couple starters are going to check back into the game. Gadeka and Raven James check back in for Villanova. So they have all five starters back on the floor. Georgetown, three starters, Kaleva, Kovacikova, and Barnes. With the two off the bench, and it's Tatiana Thompson off the bench. Gets the layup to go. And an 11-10 Villanova lead, and Kelsey's been on the sidelines and with the Villanova side this time. Leaving the Villanova huddle, head coach Harry Peretta said, you guys need to value every possession. Have confidence in your shots. You guys can knock these down. Those open looks, take advantage of them. You guys have had open three looks, take advantage of them. And on defensive side, as soon as they catch the ball, put a body on them, put pressure on them. And even if the play doesn't develop right away on the offensive side, keep dribbling and see what you can get. The play will develop. You guys have faith in yourselves. Thanks, Kelsey. And for the Villanova side, it's a good point because the, the ball movement hasn't been great for them so far in this game. And you got four players on the floor that average right around three assists per game for Villanova, but just haven't been able to move the ball like they normally like to. And again, as we talked about, the shooting rows of Segris certainly have made a difference. And that one right off the front of the rim for Hurley. I thought that was better ball movement, though, that time, and Villanova just not able to knock it down as they swung it around the perimeter. So an 11-10 Georgetown lead here, approaching the seven-minute mark in the second quarter. But what I like that Georgetown's doing, as we've talked about, they've not been afraid to try to penetrate in the paint and either draw the defense or go for the layup. Kovacikova, pull-up jumper, that's no good. Kaleva fighting for the offensive rebound, but it goes off her fingertips, and Villanova will get it back. And Marvelous Osagi Oresi will check into the game, and Tiana Jones also coming into the ball game as Jones has not played a whole lot here recently, just three minutes, no points in that last game against Xavier. So looking for a little bit of a spark off the bench from the sophomore guard. Well, that's exactly what James Howard is looking for right now is that offensive spark. He believes Tayana Jones can provide it. She can hit those outside shots. Miss Gadeka, another miss there. Kaleva cleaning up the defensive rebound. Jones is a player that scored in double digits a couple of times this year at 15 points back in November against Loyola Marymount. And now it's a Sagi a little crossover. She misses, and both teams, the shooting woes just continue. Again, the only silver lining is because both teams are struggling. It's still a very close game. A foul is called here on the floor. 
No shot there. You look at Villanova, three of 19 from the floor. Georgetown, five of 23 from the floor, and that has led to an 11 to 10 game here with about 15 minutes gone so far. And Shania Wright is going to check in for Georgetown. And she's another player they are hoping will provide a spark. She's very huge on the offensive and defensive ends. She's a great rebounder. Georgetown hasn't had her available for a while. Yeah, Wright hasn't played since January 26th against DePaul. And so you got a couple of players off the bench who really have not played much for Georgetown. And both teams just trying to figure something out as the shot clock down to four. Gadeka will kick it out. They're going to have to heave it up, and Villanova not aware there of the shot clock winding down. And good defense by Georgetown there to force the turnover. And the turnover woes continuing for Villanova and just not great awareness on that play in terms of where the shot clock was. Villanova is going to have to value their possessions much more, especially if Georgetown can get their offense going. Eight turnovers so far in the game for Villanova off of 25 last Sunday in their last game. And now driving to the basket, a missed layup there by Jones. Offensive rebound, though, by Wright. And she's not able to finish either, and will go out of bounds off of Georgetown. But again, that's one of the big reasons she's in this game right now is because of her rebounding, both offensive and defense, for the Hoyas. 5.38 to go here in the second quarter. And now Brooke Mullen in the contest for Villanova. Four points scored so far in this quarter, all by Georgetown. So Villanova has not yet scored here, approaching the five-minute mark, and now a foul is called away from the ball. And it's going to be on Osagi Aresi. So we take a look at what Georgetown's been able to do so far in the quarter. There's Kovacikova going to the basket. That was early on in this quarter. And so Georgetown with the 11 to 10 lead. As Gadeka, the senior, will kick it out to the freshman Segrist. Another missed three-pointer, 0 of 12, now from three-point range for Villanova. And credit Georgetown once again on the defensive rebound by Tayana Jones, especially when Villanova is struggling offensively. Georgetown has to get those defensive rebounds. Here's Brianna Jones. She'll knock down the deep two. And Georgetown now has outscored Villanova six to nothing here in the second quarter, and they've equaled their largest lead at three. And really, the shooting woes for Segrist continue so uncharacteristic for the redshirt freshman phenom. And Mary Seacris, or Maddie Seacris rather, going to the basket, able to draw the foul there. And so we'll head to the break. Georgetown with a 13 to 10 lead over the Wildcats. You're watching Villanova Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. What is a Villanovan in 30 seconds? Well, Villanovans aim high. Top 50 National University high. We think fast and stay connected. V's up. Villanovans think deeply, push boundaries, and go, go, go! Still with me? We climb corporate ladders in these ladders. This campus is our home, but you can find us almost anywhere. Villanovans have big hearts to solve even bigger problems, and we celebrate together. Ignite change. Go Nova. 
We are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together. This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. And welcome back to McDonough Arena. Ben Gordon Goldstein, Monica Moore back with you. 4.35 to go here in the second quarter. 13 to 10, Georgetown leading Villanova. It's been a little bit sloppy here, a lot of missed shots, but Georgetown has played well defensively and they've outscored Villanova six to nothing here in the second quarter. Nikola Kovacikova, our player to watch, she has five for Georgetown. And even though she's missed a number of shots, I really like how she's continuing to play confident on the floor. As we've talked about, she's had great dribble penetration throughout the contest, and that's a reason that Georgetown's out in front right now. And on the Villanova side, they've had a ton of extra opportunities. They're out rebounding Georgetown 23 to 14 so far in this game. Seven offensive rebounds, but they just have not been able to finish, and now they'll get a couple from the line. And normally when you out-rebound a team like that, the score doesn't look like it does right now. But again, the problem for Villanova is they just have not been able to hit down the shots. Maddie Seacrest, zero for seven right now. They have knocked down their free throws. Six of six from the line as Gadeka makes two more. Normally a 68% free throw shooter on the season. And so Villanova gets their first points of the quarter. It's a one point game here with under five to go in the half and a little pull up jumper there. Missed by Jones and fighting for the offensive rebound is right but Villanova will clear it away. I do like the effort out of right. Look at this ball movement by Villanova. Really good passing, but not able to finish. And we'll get on over the back called there. I think they got Segris there on the push. Her first foul of the game, but nice ball movement there. The kick out and Gardler just not able to hit the three pointer. And that's been the story so far for Villanova. Now 0 for 14 in the game. Jones working it around, trying to get it inside here this time. And Wright, who's been active underneath so far since coming into the ball game, draws the foul. And so she'll get a couple from the line. And she has provided a spark for Georgetown with the rebounding, posting up on the inside, now drawing this foul. That is the second personal foul on Mary Gadeka. So that'll be something to watch for here as Gadeka will go to the bench, drawing a couple of fouls. Segrist has one in this quarter as well, and that one will roll in there for Wright. And Shania Wright, only a 50% free throw shooter on the season. She's going to knock down both for Georgetown. So a 15 to 12 Georgetown lead here with under four to go. Gardler's played some extra minutes. Played well at the end of the first quarter, and well, Villanova is still trying to find their offense here in the second quarter of play, and it's been mostly around the perimeter so far for the Wildcats. As Gardler loses the handle here, shot clock once again under 10. Segrist pull up for three, rims out, and another miss there. And it's chased down there by Georgetown as Jones clears away the defensive rebound. And once again, Georgetown doing a nice job, one and done, not allowing the offensive rebound. Lots of different players getting on the glass. And nearly a turnover there as Mullen got her hands in the passing lane for Villanova. But Georgetown will keep it with 17 on the shot clock. Onken, one of the starters, will check back into the game as Gardler will go to the bench after a couple minute run here in the second quarter. And Cameron Onken, she's one of those indispensable players for Villanova. She does all the little things, plays good defense. She's a good rebounder. She's a player that could be a spark player for the Wildcats. It's Hurley, he got her hand on the shot there of Osagi Eresi. And the block there, and Villanova comes away with it here with under three to go. Low scoring battle here. 15 to 12, Georgetown leading Villanova. It's the Wildcats still trying to find their offense, and a foul is going to be called here on Jones. It'll be the fourth team foul of the quarter, so one more, and Villanova will shoot. 
Jones was being very aggressive on this play. She almost committed a foul earlier in the possession. Finally, she commits a foul right there. And you're going to see James Howard's going to put Kovacikova and Barnes back into this contest. And now Tiana Jones over on the sideline talking with James Howard about that last foul because, again, she was a little overly aggressive on that play. So a couple of the starters back into the game here for Georgetown as Seeger is still trying to find it offensively. Another miss for her. She's now 0 of 9 from the floor. But the storyline of that play was the post defense of Tatiana Thompson just going straight up, not fouling, playing very smart. You can see how she's evolved into her junior season. Here's Kovacikova continuing to try to get inside. It's Jones outside for three. That's no good. And a fight for the wow. rebound, and a couple of players going to the floor. I want to get another look at that. Shania Wright ended up on the back of Bridget Herlihy. Both players going for that rebound. And they're, they are going to get the foul called there on Herlihy as we take another look at it. Look for the, the battle here for this one. Unbelievable, the amount of effort out on the floor. That is one thing that has not been missing in this contest between these two teams. Again, just a lot of the shots not falling. Great entry pass. And Wright able to finish from inside, and she's got four points now in the game, and she has really provided a nice spark off the bench for Georgetown. As has Tatiana Thompson on the assist. That was a beautiful entry pass by Thompson. And a big answer there for Villanova. First made three-pointer of the game as Hurley knocks it down. And once again, it's a two-point game. And a little toss back. And that one's going to be a turnover as Wright that time threw it away. And so Villanova will get it back with a chance to tie or take the lead. 90 seconds to go here in the half. And that's a tough play for Georgetown to turn the ball over because Hurley, he is feeling it right now. And that step back jumper knocks down the three pointer and it's back to back threes for Hurley and a big spark for Villanova. Well, you talked about it earlier, Ben. She's really stepped up into that third scoring role to provide much more balance on offense for Villanova. She averages 8.2 points per game. Tatiana Thompson going to the basket, no good. And it'll go out of bounds off of Villain off of Georgetown rather and bodies flying everywhere right now on the defensive glass. But Villanova with the lead now will get it back and just back to Hurley. He got Segris struggling in this game. 0 of 9 from the floor. Gadeka on the bench with two fouls here in the first half. And it's Hurley who stepped up. Well, exact that's exactly what you need and why you need that balance scoring. And it's really been over the course of the last two months that she has developed offensively. She has really been critical in a lot of Vanilla Villanova's last wins. Hurley, another three-pointer. That one no good. Batted around, and Georgetown will get it here. And this and is Georgetown out in transition. And a little miscommunication there as Kovacikova and Barnes couldn't figure it out. And they'll go out of bounds and a couple of turnovers on back-to-back -back possessions here by Georgetown. As they had done a nice job of holding on to the ball here. Just three turnovers, but two of them have come on their last two possessions. And the unfortunate thing for the Hoyas, is those turnovers starting to come when Villanova getting a lot more comfortable in their offense thanks to Bridget Hurley. And you're going to see her up top. She can play everywhere. She can play at the point guard position. She can post up. That is one reason she is so critical to this Villanova lineup because she can play all over the floor and she is a huge matchup problem. But a five second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. So Hurley, he's gonna let it run down. Now five, Wager will take the shot. No good, Thompson clears it away. Georgetown has about six seconds. Now five, it'll be Barnes out to Thompson. Little pump fake and a travel. And another turnover for Georgetown and you said it, they had done such a good job of protecting the basketball, and now it's turnover after turnover for Georgetown. They have to get refocused in this contest. Four turnovers in the first half by Georgetown, three over the last minute or so, and last second heave here for James, and no good. And that is how the first half of play will come to an end. Well, both teams trying to figure out the shooting. Hurley, he got it going at the end of the half, and it's 18 to 17, Villanova leading Georgetown.
What is a Villanovan in 30 seconds? Well, Villanovans aim high. Top 50 national university high. We think fast and stay connected. V's up. Villanovans think deeply, push boundaries, and go, go, go! Still with me? We climb corporate ladders in these ladders. This campus is our home, but you can find us almost anywhere. Villanovans have big hearts to solve even bigger problems, and we celebrate together. Ignite change. Go Nova. We're at the half here at Georgetown, 18 to 17. Villanova leading Georgetown. Ben Gordon Goldstein, Monica Moore back with you. And take a look at our players of the week here in the Big East Conference. And well, Maddie Seacrest not having her best game today, coming off a really impressive week for Villanova. When as we talked about, she has been the Big East Freshman of the Week 10 times. Really a dynamic season that she's had. And you look at those numbers that she has been putting up. And Jalen Agnew as well for Creighton. Overall, Big East Player of the Week. 38.73 pointers made in her last game for Creighton. So a really impressive week for both of them as we take a look at the overall Big East women's basketball honor roll. And Mary Gadeka again, got into foul trouble in this game. But both teams in this game have players coming off of nice weeks. And I talked with James Howard about Taylor Barnes getting that recognition, and he said it was really a positive thing for her. It was a positive thing for the team for her to get that recognition after what she's been doing. It's giving them more and more confidence and getting that accolade, he said, just is another thing for Taylor Barnes because they rely on her so much for the leadership on this team. Spolier, Stonewall, and Samuels round out the Big East women's basketball honor roll. We're at the half here. Much more to come here from McDonough Arena, Villanova leading Georgetown 18 to 17. You're watching Villanova women's basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? We gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's bring it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Low scoring game here at McDonough Arena at the half, 18 to 17. Villanova leading Georgetown and Big East Fast Break is a weekly women's basketball show hosted by Megan Caffrey and Ashley Leotis, breaking down everything in Big East women's hoops. You can catch all new episodes of Fast Break during the season every Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. on the Big East Twitter and YouTube pages. With Valentine's Day this week, Megan and Ashley spread some love across the Big East. We decided to spread the love for Valentine's Day that's coming up. We looked around the league, and here are some of the Valentines that we have. My first one is going to go to the Seton Hall freshman guards, Lauren Park Lane and Maya Jackson. Lauren starts for the Pirates, and she is just this little engine that goes. She provides such a spark. And then Maya Jackson, she leads the team in three-pointers. And what's more, she really hits triples when it matters. She had three three-pointers in the Pirates game against DePaul. And then I think you go all the way back to UConn. She had five three-pointers in this game. Little girl, big time shots. And my first pick, spreading the love around the league. I'm going to go with Shantae Stone. While we heard from her earlier uh, in the show, but I was with her for both games this weekend as they made their way into New York. And on Friday, or on Sunday rather, she had a career high of 29 points, a double double with 10 rebounds as well. And she's just been lights out. She had 24 points in the first half alone, really helped her team on Friday as well make that win, that big push for the win against St. John. And I was actually talking to her a little bit off camera on Sunday and uh, just about some of her career highs. And even her sports information director said, oh, yeah, that was a career high. That was a career high. That was a career high. <laughs> All of these are taking place on Sunday. So lots of love going out to her because she had a lights out performance this weekend. 
Although the Providence Friars record doesn't show it, this Friars team has a fight in them. You looked at their game most recently against Creighton. They were down just five at the half. Then into the third quarter, they cut their deficit from double digits to single digits. This Friars team, they are young, but they have a fight in them. Their last five games, here's a nugget for how young they are. In the Friars' last five games, their starting lineup has been all underclassmen. They are young, they have a fight in them, and they are showing that. And finally, spreading the love around the league, we got to end with some puppy love. Oh, yeah, I am talking about Butler Blue the fourth. We saw him a little bit on camera. He got some screen time uh, earlier this weekend. I think we have a little bit of that video to share with you. There he is. Are you kidding me? Look at that face. Oh, my gosh. He is so precious. <laughs> he is just so cute, Megan. Uh, like I said, he is in the um, training right now. So if you mm. go on some of his social media, he is in puppy love, or puppy training. Actually, they're going to be passing the collar to him, Butler the third, passing mm. the collar to him. That's happening at Hinkle Fieldhouse on February 29th. They're asking everyone to wear white in support of passing the collar. But Butler the third, we thank you for all of your hard mm. work. And Butler the fourth, almost out of puppy school, I think. Mm. And He's ready to go. He looks well-trained. He looked like it there. I don't think I've ever been more jealous before in my life than when I was watching John Fanta and Kim Adams, who were on the call for Butler's game on Sunday, with the selfies that they had I with know. the puppy. I was just like, I wish I was there right now. I would have just let him lay in my lap and call the game. That's it. That's all, that's all you need. Treats, feeding treats all throughout the game. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now let's take... You're watching Georgetown Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. And welcome back to McDonough Arena. Georgetown just come back out on the floor, trailing 18 to 17 at the half to Villanova. And looking at the Big East standings, Butler got off to a great start here to the 2020 season with a 9-1 record to move into second place in the Big East standings. And earlier this week on Fast Break, Megan Caffrey got up with Christian Spolier and Umu Tori to hear what's been working for the dogs. Butler Bulldogs went 2-0 this weekend, moving into sole possession of second place in Big East standings at 9-3 in conference play, as I'm now joined by guards senior Kristen Spolier and freshman Umu Torre. Since the start of 2020, your team has won eight of your last nine, including a five-game win streak. What has your team been doing so well together during this stretch? I just think that like after our two losses that we took right before the end of the year, we sat there and we had a meeting so we could reevaluate ourselves and the team. This is coming from like the coaches all the way down to the players, uh, coming from the starters to the bench people, it's just everyone, our entire staff. We had to sit there and just be like, what do we need to do to get better? So then after we had that meeting, we went on and had good practices and then that's led us to what our record is now. Kristen, you scored 25 points in your team's win over Villanova. However, in the game prior to that, you scored nine points. 
You did say after when on Sunday that that's the key to this team, that you don't have to do it all every night. What is this team's offense able to do that allows everyone to get production? Um, well, I think it's just a, I guess it's key that everybody on our team has the ability to score, whether you see that on any given night or not, they do. And that's all the way from all of our starters to our bench. Everybody can score the basketball. And I think our offense allows everybody to um, be in position to take um, good shots. And like I said, I don't have to do it all. And that's really key for us to win is that we're going to have four people in double uh, digit scoring. And that's really what I think has led to our, some of our success. Umu, as a freshman, you're in the top five in scoring on your team. At what point this season have you really felt your confidence come on? I feel like after the first few games, I was a little nervous because it was my, it's a new experience playing college ball and like I've just watched my sisters play, but like I just got comfortable with everybody, with everything. Kristen, as a senior on this team, how have you taken Umu under your wing a little bit to help her grow her confidence? I think I really just um, expressed like how much like confidence we all have in her and that we really need her uh, to be successful on this team. And so I think that after she's like, you know, learned some of the plays and stuff, she's got more comfortable with everybody and um, in the plays. And so I think that is just really has led to her confidence and her ability to show everybody what she is capable of. And we all knew that she had it. And I just want to, you know, be more of like a mentor and uh, a positive leader. So that's just really what I've tried to be this year. Your team has the best scoring defense in the league, at allowing 58.7 points per game. What is this team able to do so well defensively to limit your opponent's shots? I mean, we just get up and we really uh, scramble for the ball and we're really aggressive and that just goes back to practice. We always, uh, half of our practice is always defense and so we're always working on that and um, just having the mindset that we're going to lock people down defensively and we're going to stick to our principles and hoping that will translate to offense. You guys are going to be on the road this weekend, so what is something that you take onto the road that you're going to be doing? I don't know if I really have any pregame rituals. <laughs> Is there a certain song that you like to listen pregame? Uh, I have a pregame playlist, so I mean, I guess it's a little bit of a ritual, but like other than that, I mean, normally eat, like French toast and like strawberries in the morning, <laughs> but other than that, not really, don't have a ritual. How about you, Kristen? You know, I don't really have one either. Usually on the road, uh, we'll get to breakfast, we'll watch a little bit of film, and then I'll go back and lay down for a little bit, uh, watch TV or whatever that may be, and then get ready to go to the gym. The keys to success. <laughs> Kristen and Umu, thank you so much for joining me. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you. You're watching Villanova Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. chance to speak with both head coaches coming out of the half and I'll first start with Villanova head coach Harry Peretta. I actually got a smile and laugh out of him. He said right now we just need to make our shots. They're not knocking down and if we can do that we'll play better in this half. He said I told the girls again have confidence you can make these shots. We're missing great open looks. He said Georgetown is having the same problem and he said a positive on defense he thinks this team is playing pretty solid. On the other end, head coach James Howard for Georgetown University said on defense, he's, he's very pleased with this team, holding Villanova to under 20 points in the first half. He said that's an accomplishment in itself. But he said, hey, we're missing a lot of easy open shots. He said, I really feel like we should be up double figures. But instead, we find ourselves down by one. But this is a game that we can win. Thanks, Kelsey. As we look at the stats from the first half, and Monica, I guess it's uh, glass half full or glass half empty. Good defense or bad shooting in the first half? Well, I think that's right, and that's certainly the message that we got to Kelsey. As you see the numbers right there, Villanova shooting 23% in the first, 13% in the second overall for 17%. Georgetown, they're shooting 22.6% overall in the game. You see the turnovers too. Villanova was able to tighten that up late in the second. That was a positive for them. Meanwhile, Georgetown started turning the ball over with those four turnovers late in the second quarter. So that's something they're going to really have to focus on is protecting the basketball. 
Georgetown will start the second half with the ball. They'll have the five starters out on the floor to begin this second half. Jones, Osagiaresi, Kalova, Kovacikova, and Barnes out there for Villanova against the starting five of Villanova here in an 18 to 17 Villanova lead. Barnes, little pull up jumper, no good. And another one that just rims out and Villanova clears away the defensive rebound. And that was a great open look for Taylor Barnes. I know she feels like she should have knocked down that shot, but Georgetown just needs to continue to get the looks they want. Segrist inside, that's her first made field goal of the ball game. 0 of 9 in the first half, and she's now got four points in the game. But that's a great sign for Villanova if they can get Maddie Segrist going. And one thing about really good players, they can have a bad first half where they don't knock down shots. They can be a completely different player in the second. Kovacikova got inside, but nothing doing there. Shot clock under 10. Jones fighting her way to the basket, and she's going to get called for the offensive foul there. With the push off, you're going to see here on the replay. Just trying to clear some space there, and great defense. That's someone that you talked about, the great defense from Cameron Onkin, and they're drawing the offensive foul. And that's what... Harry Peretta told us before this contest, she's always hustling. She's always playing good defense. You never have to yell at Cameron Onkin to hustle, and that's exactly what we saw on that last play by the junior. Segrist here looking for the cutter Hurley, and Hurley's the first into double figures with 10. And we talked a lot in the first half about moving without the basketball, and I think this is a great timeout call right here by James Howard. Good offensive start here for Villanova. Hurley, he's now got 10 in the game. Villanova's got their largest lead at five. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. What is a Villanovan in 30 seconds? Well, Villanovans aim high. Top 50 National University high. We think fast and stay connected. V's up. Villanovans think deeply, push boundaries, and go, go, go! Still with me? We climb corporate ladders in these ladders. This campus is our home, but you can find us almost anywhere. Villanovans have big hearts to solve even bigger problems, and we celebrate together. Ignite change. Go Nova. We are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. And welcome back to McDonough Arena, 22 to 17. Five point lead for Villanova, back to back makes for Seacrest and then Hurley. Villanova doing a good job, heating up on offense. Georgetown had to call this timeout because it's getting to be a danger zone for Georgetown right now. Villanova has stretched this lead out to five. The Hoyas need a really good offensive possession here, a good look at the basket, and they have to start knocking down their shots. 
We talked earlier about how the third quarter has been a difficult time for Georgetown. They seem to come out of the locker room a little flat after halftime. They cannot let that happen right here. Here's Barnes cut off trying to go to the basket. Second try, loses the ball and really tough defense there. Once again, it's Cameron Onkin on the best offensive player for Georgetown, shutting her down, going to the basket. And again, we've talked about those intangibles for Onkin and a nice look inside. And Hurley once again, 12 points, 5 of 8 from the floor. Remember, she was that spark in the first half with her three-point shooting, and we've talked about how she can knock down shots all over the floor. She is so versatile, and Georgetown's really having a matchup problem with her. Driving to the basket there, Osagi Aresi, and she's able to finish. Gets it back to a five-point game, but Hurley now both games against Georgetown has played really well. She had a season-high 17 in the first game against Georgetown and now has a game-high 12 in this one. And again, I think it's because the Hoyas have trouble finding a player to defend her. She creates such a mismatch problem. And we have seen her move so well without the basketball in this contest. Shot clock winding down. James trying to go to the basket. And there's going to be a foul called on the floor here. Looks like they got Osagi or Essie. And, and if they three. did, yeah, that's three on her. The little reach in there. And so that's a big foul as the guard picks up her third of the game particularly with the leadership and experience that she provides out on the floor. She's such a calming factor, and that's one of the biggest assets she provides to the Hoyas. And so having her on the bench and not having her as available as they want late in the game could be a problem for Georgetown. James is going to take the three. Defense playing back. She knocks it down, and now Villanova has an eight-point lead. Raven James, she's starting to come into her own. Remember last year she played behind Adriana Hahn, didn't get as much time, and look at this defense by Segrist. Another turnover there by Georgetown. So Villanova, eight point lead. And now it's gonna go back the other way. Cassandra Gordon's gonna come back into the contest for Georgetown. The Hoyas consistently hope that she's gonna be one of the players to provide that offensive spark. She can knock down shots from the outside and that is what they're looking for right now out of Cassandra Gordon. Gordon's hit a three-pointer in each of her last three games. So her and Kovacikova out on the floor for Georgetown. A little outside shooting. And Kovacikova is going to take the three. It's no good. But running down the offensive rebound is Osagi Aresi. And again, all the little things that she does, the intangibles. Little kick around. Gordon now for three. That's no good. Tipped out. And Jones is going to come up with it. Osagi Aresi, a three-pointer. That one's good. So three opportunities for Georgetown. And Osagi Aresi finally able to hit it. And I think it's fitting that Osagi Aresi knocked down that shot because she's the one that got the offensive rebound. She tipped the ball back out to help Georgetown hang on to that possession. And, of course, it's the senior that knocks down the clutch three-pointer for the Hoyas. A little cross-court pass here. Gadeka, who hasn't gotten much going in this game, just six points, one of five from the field. Now shot clock down to five. Hurley he has her shot swatted away there by Kayla Va, who then turned it around. And Segrist will knock it down in a big turnover there off the block from Kayla Va. Couldn't keep possession and a seven-point Villanova lead. And that's... A tough play for Georgetown right there because Kalova did everything right defensively then to turn the ball over and for it to result in a quick two points for Villanova is a tough pill to swallow for the Hoyas. You could see it in the body language for Kalova, but she has to just shake it off and get her head right back in this contest. Uh, Sagi Aresi driving to the basket will draw the foul there on James. It'll be on the floor as she was kicking it out, but a big possession once again here for Georgetown as you look at Harry Peretta, talked about him before, 42nd season and final season for Villanova. As Jones, little pull up jumper short and a rebound there by Onkin. And right now no one but Osagi Aresi is able to do anything offensively for the Hoyas. Trying to get it inside. Segrist, little kick out, three-pointer here. That one's good, and Hurley lighting it up here for Villanova. She's got 15. It's such a great inside-out game that she has. We've talked about the matchup problem, and she is shooting right now with so much confidence. I'm not exactly sure what's happened over the past two months, but it's been huge for Villanova as they head into the final stretch of Big East play. Osagi Aresi, deep three, no good, and Hurley comes down with the defensive rebound. 
And I've seen Osagi Aresi do this in several games this season where I think she decides, well, if no one else is going to take this team on their back, I'm going to do it. Hurley looking for another three. That one's no good. And Georgetown clears it away, trailing by 10, nearly turned it over. Now Kovacikova outside to Jones. That shot no good, tipped around. Kalova trying to keep it alive, but Raven James will come up with it. And a foul is going to be called here on Brianna Jones. Raven James, she is so quick out on the floor. Use that quickness right there. Her experience level is just continuing to grow for Villanova. So Villanova starting to get it going offensively. They lead it by 10, 4.06 to go here in the third. You're watching Villanova women's basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt-free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? We gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's bring it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. What is a Villanovan in 30 seconds? Well, Villanovans aim high. Top 50 National University high. We think fast and stay connected. V's up. Villanovans think deeply, push boundaries, and go, go, go! Still with me? We climb corporate ladders and these ladders. This campus is our home, but you can find us almost anywhere. Villanovans have big hearts to solve even bigger problems, and we celebrate together. Ignite change, go Nova. Well, Villanova now a 10-point lead, 32-22 to 22 with under five to go here in the third. And we look at the upcoming schedule here for Villanova. And they turn back home to Villanova this weekend. It's going to be an emotional weekend for Harry Peretta. Final two home games of his amazing 42-year career. They'll cap it off against DePaul on Sunday. And that is going to be, as you said, both emotional, but I think that Harry Peretta is going to be thinking about all those amazing players that have come through his program, and that is a very joyous thing for him to think about because he has had some great ones, some fantastic memories. And we take a look at what his Villanova team has done here in the third quarter, outscoring Georgetown 14-5, to and it's Hurley who has started to light it up. She has 15 points in this contest. She has been getting it done all over the floor. And credit Villanova for finding her. Again, she creates these mismatch problems right there, posting up Brianna Jones. She has been the go-to player as Gadeka and Segrist have struggled a bit offensively in this contest. Three three-pointers made for her in the game. 15 points, a game high. Her season high is 17 points as so she tries to get position inside and around Tatiana Thompson. Little kick out there. Now the three-pointer. Segris knew it was short, batted around, and Kalova will come up with it here for Georgetown. That was a smart decision by Hurley. She did not have a good opportunity on the inside, so a nice recognition to get the ball back outside. Villanova just not able to knock down the shot. Going to the basket here is Jones, who provided a nice spark. Jones and Wright, really nice couple of minutes there in the first half, and it's Jones who gets a couple here. That's been a great sign for Georgetown because the Hoyas have been struggling with illness and injury. They have not had a very deep bench, and they really would like to have some consistent players coming in off the bench that can contribute. Jones is called for the foul there. Gadeka, nice little spin. And so Gadeka, you can see off the move there, just got her with the body, and she'll get a couple more from the line. As Gadeka knocks down the first, and a 
Upset in the Big East today, 54 to 53. St. John's falling to Providence in that one. So big for the standings there in the Big East is St. John's eight and six there in conference play and Providence just one and 12 coming into the day. So one of the couple of teams Georgetown is battling with to try to stay out of that 10 seed at the bottom of the conference and a big win there for Providence is a little pull up jumper there. Jones misses and coming away with it is Villanova. So Villanova controlling things here in the third quarter, 10 point lead 34 to 24. And that's the eighth rebound for Segris. So even when your shots aren't falling, you can still contribute out on the floor and she's getting a good number of rebounds for the Wildcats. Yadeka trying to get to the basket once again. She's been a little more aggressive and will draw the foul. I think they're gonna get Kovacikova with the foul there, but back-to-back -back possessions, Gadeka getting to the basket. She's already six of six from the line in this game. And this is the maturity of a senior. When your outside shots aren't falling, you can drive, you can try to create off the dribble, you can draw the fouls and head to the free throw line. And that's exactly what Mary Gadeka is doing, really seeing that maturity out of Mary Gadeka. Knocks down the first one. It was actually Thompson they got with the foul, her second of the game. So two fouls for her, two for Jones. Osagi Oresi also has three in the game as the second one rims out. So her first miss, Villanova's first miss from the line in this game, but they lead by 11 here with under two and a half to go in the third. Kovacikova looking for Tatiana Thompson. Thompson, Gordon, Jones all off the bench here in this one. And Thompson inside will lose it out of bounds, but that, Georgetown will keep it. That was a great defensive play by Herlihy. She's really getting it done all over the floor, as you see her here just playing smart, not committing the foul. All ball there for Bridget Herlihy. Here's Thompson thought about the three, now will take it and misses off to the left. But Caleb, who's been quiet in this game, gets the offensive rebound. And that's a huge offensive rebound for Georgetown on this possession. Thompson just hesitated a little too much, I think, on that shot. Talked herself out of it. Kovacikova with the miss. Good box out there by Segrist, and she'll chase down the defensive rebound. Segrist now with nine rebounds in this game. Just six points. She's only scored in single figures once this season, so we'll see if she can get a few more points here to get herself back up to double figures, but some shooting woes for her in this game, but others like Herlihy have picked it up. And that is a long range three for Herlihy. I know she's feeling it, but that may not have been the best shot Villanova could take. Still an 11 point lead for the Wildcats. As Georgetown just continues to struggle offensively here in this third quarter. They just have not been able to find consistent scoring from anyone, but now Tayana Jones with a big spark off the bench. Jones has four here in the third and back to single digits. It's a nine point game here with just under a minute to go in the third quarter. And Georgetown only has two of their starters out on the floor right now as they continue to try to find something to work. Nice little find there inside. James to the cutting Segrist and Segrist now has eight in the game and back to an 11 point lead for Villanova. Well, and one way you can get your stars going is to feed them for an easy bucket just to reinstill that confidence. That's exactly what Villanova did. Let's see if that gets Maddie Segris going a little bit more on offense. James is called for the foul there. 21 on the shot clock, 40 on the game clock. So about a 19 second difference here for Georgetown. Trailing by 11, 37 to 26. It's Kovacikova trying to get to the basket. Hasn't been able to get inside as much. Now the three-pointer here, and it's Jones who has seven all in the third and single-handedly keeping Georgetown in this game. She has had a huge third quarter for the Hoyas. Coming off the bench again, she has not played very much for the Hoyas over this last stretch, but closing out the Big East season, she is going to be so big in terms of what Georgetown is trying to do just to provide another consistent shooting option if she can do that. Shot clock is off. It's going to be Gadeka with three on the game clock. It's blocked by Kalova. Gordon comes up with it, and that one will not count. 
as the quarter comes to an end. So Villanova starting to get it going offensively. They score 19 in the third quarter. They'll lead it by eight as we head to the fourth. You're watching Georgetown Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. What is a Villanovan in 30 seconds? Well, Villanovans aim high. Top 50 National University high. We think fast and stay connected. V's up. Villanovans think deeply, push boundaries, and go, go, go! Still with me? We climb corporate ladders and these ladders. This campus is our home, but you can find us almost anywhere. Villanovans have big hearts to solve even bigger problems, and we celebrate together. Ignite change. Go Nova. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. Ready for the start of the fourth quarter of play, 37 to 29, Villanova leading Georgetown. Ben Gordon Goldstein, Monica Moore back with you. We take a look at the upcoming schedule for Georgetown, and it does not get any easier here for the Hoyas. Next two games, they stay at home, but against the top two teams in the conference. And then you talked about Providence getting that big win today, and they're neck and neck with Georgetown right there in the standings. That's going to be a big game for both of those two squads. Tough final four games for the Hoyas. They're all four teams winning records in conference play as they try to finish things off on a positive note here in the 1920 season for the Hoyas. So an eight-point Villanova lead here as we get set for the fourth quarter of play, 37 to 29. And it was Villanova who really started to get it going offensively. But on the other side, Georgetown got a bit of a spark from Jones off the bench. She was absolutely huge, able to drive and getting the outside shot. Take a look at this three-pointer by Tayana Jones. She's showing some range. I like how aggressive she's being, looking for her shot. She's playing with some confidence, and Georgetown should continue to get her the ball. So Villanova will get it to start things here in the fourth quarter. They lead it 37 to 29. They'll start the fourth with the four starters and start it with an air ball as Cassandra Gordon remains in the game here for Georgetown off the bench. And on the other side, Georgetown's going to start things Three players off the bench, Thompson, Gordon, Jones, joined Kalova and Kovacikova to begin things here in the fourth quarter as Georgetown trying to get back into this game, and Jones has been the big key for them off the bench. Well, I think James Howard really liked what he saw out of this group at the end of the third. And Kalova, a little turnaround jumper, just their third shot taken in this game, and she's now got four, and all of a sudden just a six-point game. That's a huge bonus for Georgetown right there, getting Anita Kalova in the offense and now knocking down that bucket will likely get her fired up on the defensive end of the floor. As you see her right now, trying to keep track of Maddie Segrist. It's Gadeka now, shot clock under 10. Hurley, he has it. She's been the high scorer in the game, kicks it back out. It's going to have to be Gadeka who puts it up, rims out, batted around, and coming down with it. Who else but Jones, who's now got five rebounds as well. She has been absolutely huge for the Hoyas in the second. And Kovacikova from the top of the key knocks down the three-pointer. And all of a sudden, just a three-point game here in the fourth. What I really like about Nikola Kovacikova is she never seems to get rattled. Even when her shots aren't falling, she continues to shoot. She continues to play with confidence. She tries to play smart basketball. She's really a student of the game, and that was a clutch three-pointer for the Hoyas. Just three of 12 from the floor so far for Kovacikova, but a couple of three-pointers made for her. Now Villanova trying to answer, no good, and it's Jones 
comes down with another rebound. She's got six rebounds now in this game to go along with seven points in just about 10 minutes of play. So she has been all over the floor. Now has the ball here, trying to get to the basket. Little spin move, turn around, no good. And Villanova will clear it away. And even though she didn't knock down that shot, I think that was a good take for Tayana Jones, driving down the lane, trying to go for a high percentage shot. I really like how aggressive she's being on both the offensive and defensive ends. The Hoyas need to feed off of that. Kadeka working it around. Seegers trying to get position inside. Once again, shot clock under 10. It's James. Thought about the three. Now a little kick out here. Herlihy with the shot clock winding down short. And Thompson comes up with the defensive rebound. That was great defense by Anita Kaleva on that possession. At one point, she was defending. Raven James stuck with her. Then she switched after James drove inside. Kaleva really doesn't get enough credit for her defensive presence out on the floor. Kovacikova faked the three, now to the basket, and she's got five here in the fourth, and it's a one-point game. And Georgetown is on an 11-0 run, and credit Tayana Jones. She came off the bench. She has been huge. 37-36, Villanova holding on to the one-point lead, but here comes Georgetown off the bench. Jones and Gordon helping Georgetown get back into this game. You're watching Villanova women's basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Just a one-point Villanova lead here over Georgetown in the fourth quarter, and tickets for the Big East Women's Basketball Tournament presented by Jeep returns to the Wintrust Arena in downtown Chicago, March 6th to the 9th. All session tickets for the 2020 Conference Tournament are now on sale, starting at just $50. For tickets, visit www.biggies.com backslash WBB tickets. And let's go over to Kelsey Nicole Nelson, who's been in the Georgetown huddle. Uh, we're told this team we've got to be more aggressive on offense. You guys need to get down low. You guys need to attack, set the screens, drive in. You guys need to get to the rim and finish. And if you don't finish, get the rebound. Take it. Get it back up. He said you guys have to get around them on offense. You guys can do this. We have to continue to fight. We have to continue to fight. We have to continue to fight. He said every time. So we have to score. We have to keep this, this game manageable. And he said you guys have got to take those open shots. Then closing out, he said, let's end it by saying, take it on three. Thanks, Kelsey. A one-point Villanova lead. Georgetown has outscored them seven to nothing here in this fourth quarter, and it's really been Jones off the bench who sparked it all. She has been absolutely tremendous in this contest. She's three of seven, but those three that she's knocked down were at clutch moments for the Hoyas. She has sparked this run. She's got everyone else playing aggressive defense out on the floor, looking for their offense. Segrist, another missed three-pointer, and Kovacikova fighting for the rebound, and it looked like she got tied up there. Possession arrow does favor Georgetown. So Villanova will keep, or Georgetown rather, will keep it trailing by one with six and a half to go here in the fourth. And James Howard is going to stick with this lineup. This is what has been working 
for the Hoyas. So he's got Brianna Jones and Taylor Barnes on the bench. Those are his two top scorers. Thompson lost the ball going to the basket there, running it down is Segrist. And so Villanova will get it back. Still with a one-point lead, but trying to find some offense now here in the fourth. They have not scored yet in this quarter, and a travel is going to be called here on Hurley. And that's unfortunate for Villanova. They had done a much better job not turning over the basketball, but now this is a critical moment in this game with Georgetown on this big run. Thompson thought about the three. Ten turnovers in the game for Villanova, far fewer than when they turned it over 25 times last Sunday against Butler. And Georgetown was trying to get Tayana Jones the ball. Jones, little pull-up jumper. That one rims out, but running it down is Kalova. And another opportunity reset the shot clock to 20 here for Georgetown. And that is a huge offensive rebound for Anita Kalova. Jones will take another one short there. And maybe a little bit of a heat check there for Jones, who's been feeling it, but missed their last couple on that possession. But just like Coach Howard was saying in that huddle, I think a good strategy for Georgetown is what they did so well early on in this contest, which is taking the ball to the basket, draw the foul, go to the rim. They have players that are so athletic that can do that. Foul there was called on Kovacikova as Coach James Howard did call Jones over to him for a moment there, maybe just trying to calm her down as she's played well in this game, but maybe a couple of ill-advised shots on that last possession. And the other side, Villanova still trying to figure things out offensively, and it's Gadeka who's going to pull up. No good, and Tatiana Thompson rips down the defensive rebound. And again, Georgetown is doing a great job limiting Villanova to just one shot opportunity. And I think Coach Howard just talking to Tayana Jones about the fact she doesn't have to do everything herself. And it's Cassandra Gordon, baseline jumper, and Georgetown has the lead here in the fourth. I have to tell you, there is a real leader sitting on the Georgetown bench right now, and it's Taylor Barnes. There was no one more excited after that basket than Taylor Barnes. Even though she's not out on the floor right now, she's still trying to do everything she can to spur this Georgetown team on. Now we'll see how Villanova answers here, and it's going to be a foul called on Kovacikova there inside. So that's, that's a couple the of quick ones. Third of the game for Kovacikova. Be the second for Georgetown here in the fourth with four and a half to go. And so a fresh 20 here for Villanova, who has still not scored here in the fourth. Over five and a half minutes gone in the quarter. Georgetown's playing pretty good defense on Villanova. They do need to watch the fouls. There's James for three and a huge three-pointer there. It'll give Villanova the lead back, and James hits her second three-pointer of the game. She only averages 4.5 points per game, but you have to have a point guard that can knock down shots just like that one, especially in critical game moments. There's Thompson inside. It's got Gordon behind her on the baseline. Thompson's going to take it herself, and it's swatted away there by Hurley. Second block of the game there. Hurley really has done everything out on the floor today for Villanova. Some good defense. All the offense she provided early on to keep Villanova in this contest. Segrist over to Gadeka, top of the key, guarded by Thompson. And now a timeout's going to be called by Harry Peretta. Didn't like what he saw, but the shot clock winding down to 10 and three and a half minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. And so Harry Peretta talking with his team here, trying to draw something up with 10 seconds to go on the shot clock. And you look at what Harry Peretta has done in his 42-year career. Well, you just pick the accolade there. It's been quite a career for him. 20 seasons with 20 plus wins. I think that's a big one because that is consistency and longevity. And that tells you a lot about Harry Parada and what he has done in terms of the success of this Villanova program. It is going to be really strange not to have him leading on the sidelines next year. Sh shouting out the instructions here as uh, Harry Peretta trying to get career win 779. As you look at that last three pointer, it was a big one for James. And now Shot clock winding down here, down to five. It's Gadeka going to the basket. It's going to be off the side of the backboard, and another good defensive possession there by Georgetown. And 
the Hoyas continue to play very good defense in this contest. That's been a huge bonus for the Hoyas. Even when they weren't knocking down the shots, they were able to keep this game close. Kovacikova with Gordon, now a little handoff to Jones. She'll take the pull-up jumper, that's no good. And she's missed a few in a row now. And again, perhaps trying to do a little too much for Georgetown, but just needs to keep playing her game, finding the open teammate. She certainly can knock down those shots, but she doesn't have to feel the pressure to do everything for the Hoyas in these final few minutes. Here's Gadeka once again, shot clock winding down for Villanova, trying to bleed the clock a bit, but have not gotten great shots. Now it's Gadeka, she gets an open three, and that's a big one there. Five point Villanova lead. They've hit a couple of three pointers now. And again, that's the senior leader right there in Kadeka. Even though she didn't have her best offensive game today, you have to be confident when taking these shots in late game situations. Mary Kadeka knows she can knock that shot down. That was clutch for Villanova to push this lead out to five. Kadeka now this game, a couple of three-pointers that she's hit. Not her best shooting game, but one of the best players that's ever set foot in a Villanova uniform is now eighth place all time on Villanova's career scoring list. She entered the game four points back of eight, 1,428 points. And so she has passed that mark and continues to move up the leaderboard there for Villanova now at 12 in the game. Hurley has also played really well, but Hurley has been pretty quiet here in this fourth quarter as Villanova hasn't been able to figure out a way to get her involved. So we take a look at the standings now in the Big East play, and this is up to date here with the Providence victory as well. It's Villanova there at seven and six, but a big victory by Providence over St. Johnson. So that really affects both teams in this game. Well, that's certainly true. You see for Georgetown, now both Georgetown and Providence with the two wins in the Big East. And we talked about the fact that they have a date coming up later in the schedule, which is going to be a big one for both of those two teams. So a little 6-0 run for Villanova over the last couple of minutes. A couple of three-pointers hit. Gadeka and Raven James in the last couple of possessions for Villanova have gotten them back out now to a five-point lead. And this is a big possession here for Georgetown with under two and a half to go in the game. Kovacikova with the ball. She's a good option for the Hoyas offensively as Tayona Jones has cooled down a little bit. Kovacikova, really the most consistent scoring weapon that Georgetown has out on the floor right now. Thompson drew the foul in the post, just the first team foul of the quarter for Villanova. So no issues for them so far as Thompson has it with 15 on the shot clock, trying to get it back out to Kovacikova. Some good tough defense on her. Now under 10, it's Kovacikova trying to go to the basket. Throws up a little runner. It's no good. And looks like they're going to get a foul call there going for the offensive rebound on Georgetown. So we'll get another look here at the foul. They got Cassandra Gordon over the back there, called her first of the game. And now under two minutes to go here. Villanova will be in no particular hurry with the five-point lead as the Wildcats calm things down here. And not their best shooting quarter, but a couple of big three-pointers when they needed them. And one huge plus for Villanova, even though it hasn't been their best shooting day, what they've done very well today is shoot free throws. They're 9 to 10 from the line, and in a close game like this one, free throws could become critical down the stretch. Hurley he gets her own miss, but comes up short there. 90 seconds to go now. Georgetown will push back the other way. Their big possession for the Hoyas, trying to come up with something. And James Howard is going to call a timeout. He'll have one remaining in this game. So a five-point Villanova lead here, 43-38 to 38 as we take a look at the schedule. Both of these teams had off last Friday, so a nice break, but you look at the schedule upcoming. Marquette, obviously a very tough game for Villanova, and DePaul the top team in the Big East for Georgetown. Absolutely, it certainly does not get any easier for both of these two teams, and that's why every game in the Big East is so critical. That Creighton-Butler game, too, going to be a good one. Marquette right now second in the Big East Conference, 10 and four. DePaul 13 and one in conference play. As DePaul having another tremendous season in the conference and the 
the competition at the top of the conference will get a little tougher for DePaul next year with UConn returning to the Big East as well. So that'll be interesting to see those two teams battle it out. So out of the timeout, under a minute 20 to go here for Georgetown. 15 on the shot clock. Same five remain on the floor for Georgetown as Jones trying to go to the basket. No good. And Villanova comes away with it. And James smartly is going to pull it back out as the game clock approaches under a minute to go. This is good defensive pressure right here by Cassandra Gordon trying to force the turnover. Nice ball handling by James. They get it inside to Segris. Looked like Caleb might have got a hand on it, but Kadeka, the senior, comes up with the offensive rebound and a huge bucket there and a seven-point Villanova lead. Kadeka has been huge for Villanova in this fourth quarter, and again, that's what you expect from your seniors, that leadership in the critical moments. Really good defense by Villanova. Gordon misses the three, batted around, and it's going to stay here with Georgetown with 35 seconds to go, but some great possessions offensively by Villanova, and now over the last couple of minutes, they've really locked things down defensively as well. They have really looked like a different team in terms of their offense, and now you're seeing the defensive intensity of Segrist. And a foul is called here. Segrist called for the foul on Kovacikova, just her. It's the team's second foul of the quarter with 31 seconds to go and a seven-point lead here. Really no one from Villanova in foul trouble right now in this contest. And for the Hoyos, Osagi Aresi, the only player that has three, and we have not seen her in the fourth quarter. And what a play there by James, swatted away somehow, was able to keep that ball in bounds, got it over to Segrist, and Villanova now will have possession. There will be one more before, but look at that play by James. And Raven James is a player where she's not going to be the big storyline coming out of this contest, but she's hit some clutch shots. She's handled the ball very well. She's provided some great hustle plays like that last one. She's going to continue to grow and develop, and she's going to be very important over the next few years for this Villanova program. An 8-0 run for Villanova since the 4-16 mark there in the fourth quarter, and now with 23.9 to go in the game. Gadeka, who's had a nice game from the free throw line, 7 of 8 from the free throw line. We'll get a couple, and Villanova trying to ice this game, but misses the first. It's interesting. They looked to De Gedeka to try to get her the ball here as she's having a good game from the free throw line, knocks down one of two, but actually not one of their better free throw shooters on the season, just a 68% free throw shooter. Thought they might try to get it to Segrist or James, but she hits one, and now an eight-point lead for Villanova, and Georgetown now just trying to figure out something offensively. They haven't scored since the 416 mark here in the fourth quarter. Well, and that's the question is who's going to provide the offense right now because Tayana Jones has cooled down a little bit for the Hoyas. They've tried to go with Kovacikova. They've gone with Gordon. Gordon actually getting a little medical attention right now over on the sidelines, as you can see with that left knee. But right now for James Howard trying to draw up this play for his team, he's trying to find the right person to take this shot. And again, he hasn't had Taylor Barnes or Brianna Jones, his two leading scores, out on the floor for the entirety of the fourth quarter. And you know, it was this lineup that sparked the comeback, got them back into it, got them the lead at one point, but you wonder if he would have been better served to go back with the offensive stars with Taylor Barnes, who had really played well recently. And now what a play by Seacrest off the steal, and she will finish from inside, and that'll be a double-double now for Seacrest. 10 points, 13 rebounds, and three steals in this game, and now a 10-point Villanova lead as the game clock winds down to under 10 here, and Kovacikova picked the pull-up jumper and end the scoreless streak for Georgetown, but that is how this game is gonna come to an end as Villanova really finishes this game off well. At one point, an 11-0 run here in the fourth quarter before the Kovacikova shot, and Villanova comes away with the big victory here in this one by that final score of 48-40, to and you see the two coaches embrace in the final time that Harry Peretta comes to McDonough Arena. Much more to come here from Georgetown as Villanova gets the eight-point win. You're watching Villanova women's basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. 
thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt. We don't owe anybody anything, and it's all right. We got to be all in, all in. All right. We got to make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other, and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. All right. We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. What is a Villanovan in 30 seconds? Well, Villanovans aim high. Top 50 National University high. We think fast and stay connected. V's up. Villanovans think deeply, push boundaries, and go, go, go! Still with me? We climb corporate ladders in these ladders. This campus is our home, but you can find us almost anywhere. Villanovans have big hearts to solve even bigger problems, and we celebrate together. Ignite change, go. Here at the conclusion of today's game with winning head coach of Villanova women's basketball, Coach Harry Peretta. Coach, your last regular season game against the Georgetown Hoyas. Talk about the significance of this rivalry and what this win means to you and your team. Well, it's, it's, always, it's always a great game, you know what I mean? It's always a contested game, and it basically just comes down to who makes the shots at the end of the game. I thought, I, I told you at halftime, I thought they were getting pretty good shots. I thought we were getting pretty good shots. And, for us to win the game, we had one of our non-scorers make a crucial three with Raven James. Mary Kadeka, who does not shoot the three well, made a three. So what do you want me to tell you? I mean, that's what rivalries are all about. They're just crazy. You can't figure them out. Yeah, and talking about this rivalry, you also emphasize the importance of defense. So talk about your team's defensive efforts. Well, again, I thought we played pretty good D. But again, I don't think we prevented them from getting a shot. We, we did a good thing of keeping them in front of us so they didn't get a layup. And then the game boils down to, like I told you, who can make more of those medium range shots, you know? And that's what our defense was, was predicated on, not giving up a three, not giving up a layup, giving up a medium range contested shot. And last but not least, as you guys prepare for Big East tournament play soon, what are you hoping to take from this game and teach your team? Well, never to see Georgetown again this year, but um, hopefully that our kids will understand that you just got to stay in what you're doing. Even when you're struggling shooting the ball, you got to stay in it, take the shots when they present themselves, don't panic, and just try to grind the game out. It's the only thing you can do when you're shooting it that bad. Perfect. Thanks so much, Coach. Thank you. Thanks, Kelsey. Thanks, Coach. Career win number 779 for Harry Peretta in his 42nd and final season here for Villanova. Final score 48 to 40 for Kelsey Nicole Nelson, Monica Moore. I'm Ben Gordon Goldstein. Once again, Villanova tops the Hoyas by that final score of 48 to 40.